Good morning, good morning, everyone. Hope all is well and everyone's doing all right. We will get started in a few seconds. Let's give people a chance to get in here and get connected and we'll get rolling. All right, so it looks like everybody's in who's coming in right now anyway. So, like I said, um, good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's doing all right. Everyone had a great weekend. So, uh, last class, we closed out Chapter 3. Um, today, we are going to, um, I'm just going to do one section. Uh, then I'll have open the floor for, see if you guys have any questions on anything up to this point. And then from there, um, call it a day because we have a lot of content that I'm trying to give you guys the opportunity to get in there and knock out. But at the same time, you know, because of summer, we don't really have the luxury of not be, not doing anything at all. So we'll do one section out of uh, chapter four, that's 4-1. And then, like I said, see if anybody have any questions on anything else, you know, from previous sections. And then from there, I'll let you guys go for today. All right, so. Oh yeah, so I saw stuff we talked about already. So let's start with four one. We're gonna do four one today. So we're starting with scatter diagrams and correlation. And let me see. Yep. So for the few that just came in, all we're gonna do as far as new lecture is concerned or new content. Is this one section? Uh, then from there, I'll see if you guys have any questions on any previous sections. And then we'll call it a day. Right. So scatter diagram is a graph that shows the relationship between two quantitative variables measured on the same individual. And when we put numbers on the stuff, you know, all of everything will come together. Each individual in the data set is represented by a point. Okay, so in order to uh, graph this point, we have two types of variables that we will, deal, we will be dealing with. That's the exponential variable and the response variable. And uh, next week, in the red, we have the differences between the two. Uh, let's give me a chance to copy the black. So in comparison to the explanatory variable and the response variable, of course, if I scroll up too far, somebody's still copying, let me know. But the explanatory variable explains the value of the response variable. The response variable is explained by explanatory, or in other words, it responds to the explanatory variable. So an example, oh, you're in a long, Hold on one second, I hear alarm in the building. Give me one second. All right, they got it off. They're good. I guess somebody just made a mistake and set one off. Okay, so um, an example of response, response variable versus explanatory variable. Um, we're going to have a golf club, somebody will be swinging a golf club. And then so the golf club speed will be your explanatory variable. And then the distance that it travels is the response variable. So, you know, it is responding to how fast you swing the club. You know, so that's what we're talking about. So when it comes to explanatory, 
That's going to be x values, x variables. Response will be your y variables. Explanatory will be a domain versus your range for response. Input versus output, independent versus dependent. Your horizontal axis is your explanatory variable. Your vertical axis is your response variable. And your explanatory variable is your predictor. Your response variable is a predictive. So in order to be able to predict certain things, we will be using, uh, that's what the response variable will be. Uh, whenever we're trying to predict something, that's your response variable that you're trying to predict. All right, let me scroll up. So right here is just a generic example of how we'll be using our scatter diagram, scatter plot. Notice the explanatory variable is your horizontal axis. Response variable is your vertical axis. We're only using the first quadrant. If you if you know, uh, remember your x, y normally has four quadrants. Quadrant one, two, three, and four going counterclockwise. We're only using the first quadrant for these. And all of our points, our dots will be over here. All right, linear relations. The line best sums up the shape of the scatter plot. It's considered linear. And so these are some generic examples. So we will actually have numbers that will allow us to plot these points. I just generically did these, of course, you know, just making dots uh, according to the shape that I wanted. But uh, you will have actually points that will uh, graph these points, uh, numbers that will graph these points, you no know, order pairs. Um, so, and of course, you wouldn't do it by hand. You would use, you know, whether it be Math Lab or whatever app or website. But when a line best sums up the shape of the scatter plot, it's considered linear. So you see our first two examples are linear. Second two examples, we see, do see a pattern, we do see a shape, but they're considered nonlinear. It's not a straight line. And then our last one is no relation at all. And then here in purple, nonlinear does not mean no relation, just no linear relation. So there is a relation here in both of these two, it's just that they're not linear. Can I scroll up? All right, we have associations. Scatter plot is considered positively associated when one value increases, the other one increases. So, in other words, if you go from left to right, it's going up. You want to follow your points from left to right, it's going up. Negative, negatively associated, that means when one value increases, the other one decreases. So when you follow from left to right, it goes down. You're always going from left to right.
All right, scrolling up. I hope not anything. All right. So linear correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient is a measure of strength and direction of the linear relation between two quantities, a quantitative variable, excuse me. So there are two symbols that represents a uh, correlation coefficient. Uh, Greek letter rho. It's almost like the P. You watch baseball, Philadelphia Phillies sometimes have that, that type of, I guess, smooth uh, type of P on the edge. Um, but that's our population correlation coefficient. And then R is our sample correlation coefficient. And that's the one we will be using, um, the sample correlation coefficient. So look. All right. So just like for the standard deviation and the variance, we are going to use an app website or calculator to calculate the correlation coefficient, which is coming out of 4.1, and then the regression line, which is coming out of 4.2. We can use these calculation.com for this as well. I'll show you that in a second. All right, and go to properties. All right, properties of the correlation coefficient is between negative one and one, inclusive. So it can never be greater than one or, neg or less than negative one. If R is positive one, then a perfect positive linear relation exists. If R is equal to negative one, then a perfect negative linear relation exists. All right, the closer R is to positive one, the stronger the evidence of the positive association. And the closer R is to negative one, the stronger the evidence of a negative association. If R is close to zero, then little or no evidence exists of a linear relation.
So um, rare statement R close to zero does not imply no relation, just no linear relation. So we talked about that looking at our diagrams. It is a unit that's a measure of association and it is not resistant. So that means it is affected by outliers. If I go too far up, let me know. So next we have just some generic uh, scatter plots that explain what we're talking about as far as being close to one, being one, or being further away from one when it comes to our correlation coefficient. So you see our first one, R being equal to positive one. So it's a perfect line, straight line going positive, you know, going up. Then here, as we start to deviate from that, we start to move away from one. That's why I go to point nine. Then here, we still have a little bit, have a linear relation that we can see, a linear pattern, but notice it's not a straight line. So that's why it's closer to zero, it's point four. The same thing happens when we're talking about in negative fashion. Perfect negative one, then as you deviate from the negative one, start moving closer to zero, it's gonna start moving away from negative one. Both of these last two would be considered R would be close to zero. But notice here that would be a um, that would be a relation there. You notice we see a pattern, an arc, but it's not considered a linear relation. Here there's no relation at all. All right, any questions? That'd be okay. Let's go on real, everybody good with the graphs. All right, give you a chance to uh, write this down. So testing for a linear relation. Determine the absolute value of the correlation coefficient. Find the critical value from Appendix A for the given sample size. And that's Table 3 in Appendix A. I didn't put the Table 3 initially. It was Table 3 in Appendix A. And then if the absolute value of the correlation coefficient is greater than the critical value, a linear relation exists between the two variables. Otherwise, no linear relation exists. So I'll give you a chance to write that down. And let me pull up the table. Yes.
All right, turn the scroll up. Everybody good? I still hold on to black. All right, so here are our um, values for our table. Let me take a picture of it because I'm going to go to another screen in a second. So we have the club head speed, swinging miles per hour. Then we have the distance that the ball travels, it's in yards. So we got 100, you know, swing it to 100 miles per hour, hit the ball, and it traveled 257 yards. So that's that first point. So if you got a chance to copy that, then we'll go to um, easy calculation. So let me show you that. All right, can we go to the next page? Are that good? All right, so we're looking at um the correlation coefficient easy calculator. You know, remember I said you type in what you're looking for and you'll put easy calculator or easy calculation behind it. And I know easycalculation.com can do it for us. And then with this one you can add rows. I'll take away a hidden fuel right here. I'm trying to find the pictures. Here we go. So we have 100, 257. All right, so we're putting in our, even though we put in six numbers, they only count as eight values, eight occurrences, because you swing the golf club a certain amount of speed, then the ball travels. That's one occurrence or one observation. And then you do that eight different times. So that's why we have 16 numbers, but it's only counted as eight observations. So, so eight total numbers, and then we have a correlation right here. All right, so you got to be careful with this because if you mess up on one number, let's say if I put 274 instead of 275, see now it's 93, 107, but it's 93.869. So that changes the value just by messing up on one digit. So make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure you go and re revisit um, your numbers and make sure you have the right numbers in there. Okay, so before we go back to the notes, question on what we just did. So you want an app, website, or calculator, something along those lines that all you have to do is type in the values and hit enter, and then you can go on to the next thing. Okay. All right. 
So find a correlation coefficient. That's what we just did, not 0.939. And MathLab will let you know how many decimal places they want. Sometimes they ask for three, sometimes they ask for four. So whatever they ask for, make sure you, um, you, know, you write down the proper decimal values. Then you take the absolute value of R. So remember, R can be positive or negative. We just want the positive. So when you take the absolute value of a number, that's what I was emphasizing right here. You take the absolute value of three, is three. If you take the absolute value of negative three, it's still three. So the absolute value will always yield the positive number. And when we want the absolute value of R, that means we want the positive representation of R. So that's why this is positive 0.939. Okay. So now we're going to go to the critical value in table two. Um, it's on page A-2 in the back of the book. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, this is a picture from the back of the book. Now, you have to ask yourself first how many values we have. Remember, we had eight observations. If you go back to the notes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times we saw the golf club. And so that's why n is equal to eight. Okay. So n is equal to eight. Yeah, n equal to eight, we have the, oh, well, I'm not paying on, okay. We have the critical value of 0.707. Uh, any questions on getting the critical value? Whatever your number of your observations are, you look over here for it, and then you go to the value right here. All right, any problems with 707? So that's so how we got 707 right here, critical value. Now you compare the absolute value of correlation coefficient to the critical value. So the absolute value of R is 0 0.939, critical value is 0 0.707. So the absolute value of R is greater than the critical value. All right, any questions up to step four? All right, conclusion. Since the absolute value of R is greater than the critical value, a linear relation exists between the club head speed and the distance. All right, any questions, any questions? Is everybody good? The copy, that's straight. All right, so that's it for four one. Next class, uh, we're looking to get into four two and four three, and that is the end of chapter four. So that's why um, pulling back, trying not to do too much, but at the same time, we got to do something because it's summer. Um, I want to give you guys opportunity to get this stuff in there and knock it out before you get more stuff thrown at you because you know after after we do these two sections of chapter four. Then we have a test for chapter three, chapter four stuff. So uh, please take advantage of the time and uh, make sure that you are knocking out this work in a timely fashion. Um, questions, any questions 
or anything. Anything, anybody. So we've done one, two, we got knocked out chapter three last class. By next class, in the next class, we knocked out chapter four. So there'll be four chapters uh, that you guys are held responsible for. Uh, so everybody good? No questions before we close? Okay. All right. So you guys are good. I'm good. Um, once again, just get, make sure I reemphasize what we're doing today. Only reason you know we're pulling back is because we want to make sure we give everybody the opportunity. If you have a good one as well, you have the opportunity to get caught up, get this stuff, get to a, a good space before we jump out of chapter four and be looking at chapter five. You know, so you guys have a good one. Be safe. I will see you next class. And um, yeah, talk to you then. See you then. Have a good day. Thanks. You do the same. Take care.